cloudy day, perfect day, dendrobium hibiki day, and blooms for you day. Hi, <laughs> so good to have you here. <laughs> Cartwheels around the patio because look who's back, dendrobium hibiki, an all-time favorite, a classic here on my patio. Blooms like this once a year, but for a very, very long time, and I can't be more excited. <laughs> now, we're not going to see any sparkles, any crystalline effect here today, because, yeah, cloudy day. But we don't need sunglasses to appreciate the psychedelic blooms of this dendrobium hibiki, the hot pink matching that neon orange. It can be quite painful when looking at the blooms with the sun shining on them. <laughs> And you can see that I'm already losing the plot. <laughs> this is Blooms for You. These are the episodes that I do so that I can say thank you to everybody that comes up on the list of my Blooms for You database. And that would include everybody that has commented on my videos and people that I can identify who have subscribed. If you are a private account, I cannot see you, but that is also why I do an introduction so that I can thank everybody for your support on my channel everyone who is not mentioned here in this episode today. I respect privacy very, very much. So if you're ever wondering, well, you know, I've never been mentioned. How does this even work? Well, if I can't see you or if you haven't commented, then I can't put you on the list. And I don't want anybody to think like, oh, yikes, I commented. Now I'm on the list. That's a bit creepy. Since when? 4th of July, 2020? Uh, not creepy at all. I don't know who you are. <laughs> I just see a name and on the list it goes. It's simple as that. So that I can see, oh, so-and-so's name has come up and we match your name to that bloom. And then one day an episode comes out and I can say thank you to so-and-so directly. Meanwhile, like I said, everybody who is not mentioned here today, Dendrobium Hibiki blooms for you to say thank you to you for your support on my channel because I don't want anybody to ever feel left out. Currently, I'm heading with the names. If you subscribe to my channel, I'm reaching the end of 2021. That'll give you an indicator <laughs> as to where we're at with regards to my list. In the happy event that I actually get to the bottom of the list without adding new names, you know, hint, hint, nudge, nudge, please subscribe, keep that list going. But in the happy event that I do get to the bottom of the list, I will start right at the top again and we start from scratch. And the moment you become an Orchid Ninja, which is a channel member, we're Orchid Ninjas here. If you become a channel member, then you immediately go to the top and then surpass everybody else to make sure that I Thank you for becoming an Orchid Ninja, which is an amazing support to my channel. If you don't know about my Orchid Ninja membership, just click the join button. Just have a look at the perks. You don't have to complete anything. You don't have to go to accept because that would then charge you. Just look at what the perks are when you become an Orchid Ninja and we'll take it from there. So those are all the rigmaroles around this episode and it makes me super excited that I actually get to show some more blooms, talk about more orchids and also get to the names that have matched with the blooms that have opened in this episode. Dendrobium, Hibiki, blooms for everybody that is not mentioned here today. Your support is appreciated. Neophenicia falcata. Oh, sorry, Banda falcata. But to be honest with you, if I were Japanese and into the samurai orchids, I would not ever want my Neophenicia prized possession to be called a Vanda. This is the standard falcata, I know, but you know, there are other fancier ones that also fall under the category of the Vanda. Imagine the shock horror of somebody who owns something so priceless now having to call it a Vanda. Oh well. <laughs> Vanda falcata, nine spikes this year, and I have have a spike each for Elizabeth Ninan, Luke Ma, Wisconsin Gardeners, Frank L, Carlos Ayala, Eline Chris, Tom Firmby, Prohodaction, and Como es Formosa. That is two more names than I could dedicate my Vanda Falcata to in 2021 when I had seven spikes. We're doing very, very well. And I want to thank all of you so much for your support on my channel. It means a lot that you are here, that you have subscribed, you have commented, have done something in the past on my channel that has caught my attention because I saw your name. And finally, I get to say thank you to you personally using my nine spikes of Vanderfalkata. 
We are in the shade. Let's head into the sun. I took some B-roll footage so that you could see what she was looking like in the sun. I was a little bit concerned that if I speak to you with my Van der Carter in the sun that we would get a complete blinding washout because the purity of the white of these blooms is just astounding. Without sunglasses on or something, you would probably be hard pressed to actually see it clearly. Hence, B-roll footage in the sun. Just gorgeous. I waited for all the spikes to open, so I have a bloom that is not quite up to perfection and a bloom in the back or a spike that has just opened, but we pretty much have our complete show, full blooming of this orchid. For this dedication, she is in Lekka Ceramis and self-watering because I couldn't keep up with the needs of the orchid using the classical sphagnum moss presentation tightly wrapped around the roots and all that beautiful, elegant visual that a van der should have. Unfortunately, here in my climate, I cannot accommodate those needs without having to switch the sphagnum moss out two times a year because it would have to stay really wet through the warm months of the year so that this orchid doesn't deteriorate. Then it gets all that algae around it. And honestly, that was distracting from the beauty of the orchid as a whole. In my setup, in my climate, she is doing fabulously. And also because of her orientation as she was forming the spikes, you can see everybody is pointing in that direction. <laughs> so we don't have to keep turning the orchid. There are a few spikes in the back here. Yeah, they didn't quite make it or they faced the facade and thought, well, that's my main source of light. But you know, look at this. Look at this. I'm absolutely in love. And let me tell you about the nights when I go onto my blooming alley for one more checkup. Really? Now, it's not really a checkup. It's more like I gotta go out there and appreciate the fragrance of this orchid, which is pretty intense, I have to say. And it's such a pleasure on the nose. There's a lot of lemon in there. There's a bit of jasmine in there. But there's a real kick of soap as well. Clean, fresh soap. It basically, if it didn't have lemon in it, I would actually say if you have one of those scented candles that says white linen on it, that is the fragrance. So it's almost like there is no scent, but there is a scent. It is clean and it purifies the air, so to speak. Just amazing. I am looking forward to having these blooms for another two weeks. I have a very protected in bright shade because if there are any elements out there that's going to take my blooms out like direct sun, She's got none of that at the moment because these are so special and they really perfume my blooming alley together with everybody else that is blooming at the moment that is also nocturnally fragrant. Just incredible. And I am so pleased that as these names were coming up, I was like going, yes, I get to say thank you to Elizabeth Ninan, Luke Ma, Wisconsin Gardeners, Frank L, Carlos Ayala, Elin Chris, Tom Firmby, Proho Daction, como es Formosa. You as well. Thank you so very much for your support on my channel. I hope everybody is doing well in your part of the world. Know that wherever you are, the fact that you're here with me on my channel, that is so very much appreciated. One of the most wild but elegant orchids I have in my collection is Coilostylus parkinsoniana. She has four blooms, but I will only be dedicating three because the fourth one isn't exactly perfect, as you will see in the B-roll footage that I took of this orchid. And we'll probably play that through a loop for a little while because it's very difficult to see the blooms if you take the whole orchid <laughs> into the viewfinder we would have to step back at least three, four meters because she is long and gangly. She's got the spaghetti vibe. So the three blooms of my Coilostylus Parkinsoniana go to Angelina FL24, Andy and Eric M. Thank you to the three of you very, very much for your support on my channel. The size of these blooms is absolutely astounding in comparison to the foliage of the orchid. 
Now, when you look at her first glance, the first time you receive her in the mail, you think, well, that's not going to be too difficult. <laughs> but as she grows out her new growth, she just gets longer and longer and longer. And I truly would prefer to be in a climate where I could just put her up into the Y shape of a tree branch, nest her in that location and just watch her waterfall growth habit all the way down a tree and never bother with her at all. With the exception of, you know, mounted orchid care as best as possible, but she would be so much better off on a mount. Enjoying her blooms from a distance and then venturing up to a tree and inhale the perfume that she exudes at night. Still in my climate, I cannot do that, so she is in a pot. But what I did achieve was a goal that I had when she started her new growth during the winter, and that was to avoid getting the tips of my leaves bruised, damaged, desiccated, bashed, anything like that. So it's been a very, very careful maneuvering with her for the longest time. These blooms, they bloom for such a long time to the point that the first time I had the Parkinsoniana in bloom, I kept looking and thinking three weeks, four weeks, she was still in bloom. And then one day it was three months and the blooms were still looking gorgeous. Everything about this orchid is amazing, speaks to me. The chartreuse petals and sepals that appear a little bit more yellow now that she has matured, but they are a little bit more on the green side in real life. And the remarkable texture and patterning of the spike itself. Beautiful, kind of snake-like texture, very exotic. Then it gets backed up by the lacy looking sheath, like little Belgian lace. This orchid has everything that I like about what growing an epiphyte is about. Unfortunately, the only thing is it's in the wrong climate and we have to make do with having her in a pot. I have a little growth at the top that's hanging on by a fiber of sorts. <laughs> the fact that that is still alive and progressing is a miracle. And that little growth up at the top is growing its first new growth again, also for the season. Clearly, I'm desperate for that growth to make it. I want it to become strong so that I can safely remove it from the mother plant and then grow it on for another healthy orchid. But yeah, the fragrance at night is intoxicating. It is not jasmine. This year, it reminds me of a lemon tartan, something along those lines that has a glazed top of molasses honey, super intense at night. And what a pleasure to go to my blooming alley and just stand there and not even see the orchid, but smell her. Her fragrance is tangy and it is not invasive to the nose. It's you can't get enough of it. And the closer you get to the bloom, the more intense it is. Oh, and yes, of course, the reason why this orchid is on display and we're talking about her and I'm showing her to you is to once again say thank you to Angelina FL24, Andy and Eric M. The three of you, my Coilo stylus Parkinsoniana, she blooms for you. Thank you so, so much for your support on my channel. Coilostylus ciliaris variety or steady eye. Two blooms, even though you see three, I'll show that, I'll explain that, but two blooms to say thank you to Samuel Mendoza and Nicole Wildman. Thank you to the two of you for your support on my channel. I got you two blooms of my Coilostylus ciliaris variety or steady eye. Better than no blooms at all. The third bloom looks a little bit as though it's about to go over, but the strangest thing is, these blooms should last about two to three weeks easily. I have never seen a Coilostylus bloom go yellow like that and then stay that way for so long. Normally, if it's deteriorating, well, it should be done and dusted and have fallen off by now. So I'm hesitant to dedicate that bloom to anybody just in case something is going on and it is actually deteriorating but taking longer to fall off. I don't want anybody to have a deteriorated bloom as a dedication if I can help it. This orchid has been in my collection for a very, very long time arrived to me mislabeled. It was supposed to be an epidendrum nocturnum. Um, yeah, well, clearly. <laughs> Oops. 
never mind, I am not complaining. When mistakes happen and they work in my favor, so much better for me and for the orchid in question because I love me Coilostylus orchids. I am always a fan of chartreuse or green colors in orchid blooms, any blooms for that matter, but orchid blooms specifically, seeing as that's what I grow. Put a touch of white into the mix and, well, give me a little bit of a star shape. <laughs> We're off. And speaking of we're off, I always look at these blooms and they remind me of little, probably little transportation vehicles that little fairies and pixies would sit on, a la Avatar for the youngsters. <laughs> Something along those lines. They are so charming, so delicate and very, very fragrant. Now, I had a mass blooming last year and the year before that. And then my orchid, of course, I had to fiddle with it, meddle with it, and I put it into LECA and self-watering last year to get it to recover it objected to my cold and dark extended spring so I had some suitables desiccate on me because the orchid was using all the energy just to stay alive as the light levels weren't helping at all and neither were the temperatures that were far too cold thankfully it is vigorous because a lot of pseudobulbs have since desiccated and I've removed them so she looks a lot prettier now having had them on before it always looked like this orchid was going downhill but no way even leads that are brand new that had a desiccated pseudobulb is growing a new growth. So this orchid is absolutely fine, thankfully, and will hopefully next year in 2023 give us more blooms because, well, I'm keeping my fingers crossed for a better spring. The fact that she even bloomed borders on a miracle fact that I have two blooms that I can dedicate amplifies that miracle and the fact that she's alive that's a hat trick of miracles I <laughs> can't complain the fragrance is a bit citrusy a little bit on the sweet side a little bit of a tangy one if you spritz for example a lemon around your nose and you get those essential oil the little squirts that you get into your nose that would want to make you sneeze that's how tangy this orchid is but you have to get to the orchid at night in order to appreciate that fragrance if you go to bed early, you will miss out during the day. She isn't fragrant, but wow, it is well worth hovering and fussing around the orchid late afternoon at dusk, long into the evening. If you want to be around a gorgeous fragrance that freshens any kind of summer night, Coilostylus ciliaris variety or steady eye is your kind of orchid. I promise you, you won't regret it. After this blooming, with all the new growths that are coming, of course, there's one thing about this orchid that is a little bit difficult to handle when living in a very dry climate and then the heat and temperatures rise. I'm still waiting for temperatures to rise here in southern Spain, but here we are. She is going to start growing roots. I then have my work cut out to keep those roots from desiccating and getting into the media. But you know what? Root growth... <laughs> No complaints. <laughs> Bring it on because she's a happy root grower. Anyway, I don't want to be rambling on and on about my orchid. I just give a quick update. But the blooms are what we're here for. And the blooms are here for Samuel Mendoza and Nicole Wildman. To the two of you, once again, thank you so much for your support on my channel. Oh, <laughs> I know, I know. What does this look like? Oh, what are we looking at? <laughs> well, first of all, this is Coilostylus ciliaris. No variety, no nothing. It's just the original, the OG Coilostylus ciliaris in bloom. Nailed it. We did it. And these blooms bloom for Marjorie de la Pena, Elizabeth Ross, Oliver Hildenbrand, and Sue Frese. Now, thank you first of all to all of you for supporting my channel. Coilostylus ciliaris. Four blooms managed to come through after the repot, after the intervention and root ball cleanup. So yes, I am smiling from ear to ear. Um, and I'm also smiling because, uh, yes, my light training did work. I did want the growths to come back into the pot back in the day. 
What I didn't factor in was that the spikes would then, of course, if I kept that position up, also grow back into the pot. And I thought that's going to work fine, expecting longer spikes. But this orchid didn't bloom for me in 2021. And I forgot that the spikes aren't that long after all. So we have ourselves a little bit of a where are the blooms scenario going on here. <laughs> so note to self for next time that I can train the growth to grow into the pot without then having to keep the angle of the pot the same the moment she starts to spike I can then turn the pot around the opposite direction to get the spikes to grow over here for example if there is a next time of course that's what we're working towards but in the meantime this is what we've got and she is looking beautiful specifically for Marjorie de la Pena, Elizabeth Ross, Oliver Hildenbrandt and Sue Freze. I've got some gorgeous gorgeous stills some photography of these blooms because yes here we are once again the combination of chartreuse and white currently quite the theme in my blooming alley chartreuse and white <laughs> just so happens that she's also nocturnally fragrant but she is not as intense as the other Coilostylus that I have in bloom, which happens to be Coilostylus parkinsoniana. And well, let me just say, between the three Coilostylus that I currently have in bloom, I have a very pleasant, citrusy, tangy, creamy fragrance in my blooming alley at night. <laughs> and this orchid, despite having those chartreuse white colors that I enjoy, has that amazing, amazing detailed lip. It is shredded, it is frilly, it makes no sense at all to me. But then again, I'm not a pollinator <laughs> unless I go in manually and do it myself. But no, we're not going to do that. She's just been repotted. She will not be carrying a seed pod this time around. But it is the lip that is just so charming that differentiates her from the other coilo stylus that I have. It makes her look even more dainty, more elegant, frail and petite. But don't be fooled. The petals and sepals are pretty sturdy and very, very waxy. The lip itself is also relatively tough. It has a strong texture to it. It is not floofy, not in any way has it got any kind of semblance of being weak. The texture is very, very tough. And the beauty about this orchid, when you turn her around and check the back of the petals and sepals, you can see a stripy little hint of pink or some form of vintage pink blush. Just a little added detail as well. I have absolutely no complaints about this bloom. I can't say I wish it was like this. I wish it was like that. Nah, I just love these blooms and thankfully they are here. Also, I'm really happy to say that she survived the repot pretty, pretty well. The roots are branching. One of the root tips I was hoping would not stop growing has stopped growing, but it is not dead. Everything else within the pot where we were working, at least the front part that I can see is branching and she is going to be a-okay for hopefully another two years and hopefully with a few more growth and then of course blooms next year again not every second year that would be nice thank you very much appreciate you anywho marjorie de la pena elizabeth ross oliver hildenbrandt and sue freze coilus stylus ciliaris she blooms for you thank you for everything that you do here on my channel you're very much appreciated How close can you go? How close can you go? <laughs> this orchid is so much fun to play with. It is a beautiful orchid to photograph as well. I have so many images of Dendrobium hibiki from throughout the years that I've had it. And <laughs> it's almost like every year I see it again for the first time. I got to get a picture of that. I got to get that angle. I don't know if I've got that angle. Ooh, I'm not sure if that cluster, if I've got it in that formation or in that color. It's crazy. It's ridiculous. I'm nuts about this orchid. <laughs> So you've been warned, the next few episodes of Blooms For You will feature Dendrobium hibiki because I love me my cluster bloomers. It just gives me that feeling that everybody that was not mentioned here today doesn't feel like they need to, you know, carve out a bit of a petal and say, that part is mine as a thank you. <laughs> There's plenty of blooms to go around and plenty more to come. So <laughs> meanwhile, Cousin It in the background is like going, Oof, gee, <laughs> he had his time. 
Anyway, I babble. I want to thank you for your time. I don't want to waste your time. Thank you so, so much for being here. Know that you're so appreciated. Know that I am so grateful that you're here. Have yourselves a beautiful day. The condition remains the same. Please stay safe. Take care. Bye.